intro. This book is all about the ability of mankind to transform. The definition of transform is as follows. To change in composition or structure. To change the outward form or appearance of. To change in character or condition. To cause a cell to undergo genetic transformation. I call this present era the evolution revolution of man. Mankind is slowly waking up from its slumber. So much interesting wisdom is being brought forth from the past and present. Currently, I've been fascinated by Buddhist wisdom. Buddha, in my eyes, was the best psychologist ever. Mind you, he didn't call himself that. The term came centuries later. But Buddha understood the mind more than anyone else. This book will talk about the 51 mental factors. To transform, we must have a reference point to transform. The Buddhists have 51 mental factors to take a look at. I'm going to try to bring this wisdom down to simple and easy to understand. The Buddhists can be very intellectual. The wisdom is there. I love to make things super easy to understand. I may not get the entire theory, yet I get the wisdom behind it. I've been a software engineer for many moons. I have built many complicated systems by building simple objects and combining them into a software program. It can become quite sophisticated. All of my software projects were built this way. Simplicity is the key. Come with me on this incredible journey. This is the ultimate video game. <coughs> you have been playing this game for eons. The goal is to be conscious and aware. Transform. The definition of transform is as follows. To change in composition or structure. To change the outward form or appearance of. To change in character <coughs> or condition. To cause a cell to undergo genetic transformation. What if I told you that the wise men from the past talked about transforming themselves. This is the goal of human life. <coughs> the great tools of transformation have always been there. Like any tool, if you don't use it, it will not benefit you in any shape, way, or form. Using that tool helps one to transform. We are all on the treadmill of life. The mystics decided a long time ago to get off the treadmill. By doing so, one discovers the jewel within. This path is the most practical path. One must have his feet on the ground and your head in heaven. Be conscious and aware is the key. The more conscious you are, the more practical you can be. In this video ga game of life, the purpose is to transform. Life gets bored play at the same boring level. Currently, humanity is playing at the same level for a long time now. Wars have never solved anything. They have caused extreme suffering on the land. Millions of innocent people have been killed due to man's war. 
War is one word I would love to delete from the human dictionary. It should be struck out. Yeah, it's so easy to start a war. It doesn't take much. Just a person who has a pet peeve can start one. We are pulling out of Afghanistan after 20 years, yet utter chaos still exists. We leave the country worse off than it was 20 years ago. Each one of us can transform if we want. The only thing that is stopping us is our apathy. One of my favorite expressions is, you are the universe. You just don't know it. What a powerful expression. Does that excite you at all? We are so much grander than what we think. Most people would probably say, I don't believe it. I've been meditating for many months. In fact, since day one, I love to meditate. My intuition tells me this is true. Wherever I go, this experience goes with me. In the beginning, I would meditate on God. After some point in time, God meditates on me. That same energy that is made up of the universe lies inside of me. And I'm all and I'm, I'm aware of that. That energy is pure kindness. The energy is pure love and compassion. This energy is our true nature. You see, we don't die, we are eternal. Our bodies will die we will live forever. Meditation is the link between man and the universe. Imagine having a URL to God. If you don't have that URL, you can't go to that website, but he enters that proper URL in your browser and hit enter. Presto, you are at that site. Meditation is the URL that you enter into the browser of life. Mind you, this web page is always changed. It's not a static site. All the knowledge of the universe lies there. But to tell you the truth, the main key is to transform yourself and become a better person. This is like taking a shower. This is not some ordinary shower. This is a shower of kindness. This is a shower of love and compassion. This is a shower of patience. Slowly, I mean slowly, one transforms. One begins to pull the negative weeds within. Weeds such as anger, greed, war, and on and on and on. Nobody gets a free ride in life. Everybody is responsible for their actions. We must be conscious and aware every moment of our life. Life is like a video game. At each level you play the game it becomes more interesting and exciting. Imagine life throws you a curveball. Someone says something to which you don't agree with. We see this all the time. Just look at people playing at each other on Facebook. Now think that in this video game of life, the picture throws a curveball your way to see how you will react. If you react, and flying someone, you get a strike. If you don't react and simply smile with kindness, you hit the ball out of the park. You then go to the next level in the game of life. This person loves to play the video game and is aware of the steps he takes day in and day out. We have never been trained to this game. We have never been taught that this new game of life exists inside of ourselves. We just constantly react to situations. We are like a ship without a rudder. The goal of this video game is to become like the universe. The universe is kind. The universe is love and compassion. The universe doesn't judge us. The universe doesn't say, look at how many strikes are against us. The universe says, you have your free will, so why judge? Yet this video game of life provides all the necessary levels where you know this is a divine game. 
Bugs Bunny once said, don't take life so seriously that you will never get out of it alive. I like that. Don't take life so seriously. Be like the sun in the sky. Just shine. Don't react to every situation. Yet when dear old Bugs said you will never get out alive, the great video masters of old have a different story. They said you could be aware of your true nature while you are alive. Big difference. Once, when I was young, I was scared to death of dying. I was told when you die that you simply vanish and never become aware again. I didn't like that story, so I spent many moons in pursuing this answer. To be frank, I still don't want to die. I love this place, yet, in my experience, I'm bringing heaven down to earth. Heaven lies inside of us. It's not a place we go to. Heaven is a state of mind. Depending on how we are proactive and aware, or simply reacting in this video game of life, will correspond to our state of mind. People ask me why I love the Eastern thought. Well, for one, the Buddhists have been talking about a crystal clear mind for over 3,000 years. In the West, it was only since the mid-80s that universities give a class on subjects like happiness. The Buddhists have been talking about this since day one. I'm not saying you have to be a Buddhist. I'm not. I adore all religions. There is a thread which ties all religions together. It is the thread of blood, of love. I'm just saying that in the West, we need to become more aware of this video game of life. The world needs us, needs us to step up and consciously be aware and play this game with a sense of knowingness. For example, it's a little dangerous in this video or game of life when our president tweets at 3 o'clock in the morning. He ridicules little rocket man. My button is bigger than your button. These kinds of words can lead to nuclear war. Our words and actions can either bring heaven to earth or modern day hell. Just take a look around the world today. We need to be aware, and as my friend, Bill Cunningham told me, we need more respect in this world. Personally, we are all in the same boat together. We either sink or swim. We need to be more tolerant, kind, and respectful of each other. Mankind needs to be a kind man. That's the most difficult thing in life. Look at all the conflicts and wars around the world. It's so easy to flare up with anger. It's so easy to put gasoline on the fire, yet to act with kindness in the face of adversity is the most difficult thing to do. We are all a piece of the puzzle in life. Dog training for the mind. Well, we just transformed the title. During my morning meditation session, I got a message to change the book title to Dog Training for the Mind. I'm going to try to make this book as simple as possible. I'm trying to drop out all Tibetan names and just use simple English. I remember as a kid reading books like this. I needed a dictionary to decipher the meanings. Unfortunately, there are many terms in foreign languages. We all understand training a dog. You buy a puppy and quickly learn the dog needs to be trained. Nobody loves a constant barking dog. The dog needs to be trained to do many things. So 
We train our dogs. Yet for thousands of years, mankind has not trained its minds. Look at the world today. <clears throat> I wouldn't call this an example of a disciplined mind. Look at our politics today. Truth is fiction, and fiction is truth. This book talks about the 51 mental factors of the mind. We were never taught this in schools. The Buddhists have been studying this for well over 2,500 years. It's part of their culture. Yet, it's only since the mid-80s that Western scientists study happiness. Most of the mental health was talking about all the negative aspects of the mind. The more we understand the mind, the easier it is to train it. We see the results of an undisciplined <coughs> mind. <coughs> Our previous administration demonstrated quite well. Note, we're not talking about politics here. We're talking about the necessity to have a disciplined mind. Most wars have started this way. Our current world situation being in chaos stems from an undisciplined mind. I say over and over that the spiritual path is the most practical path. One learns to discipline the mind in all areas. Mankind lives like leaves blowing in the wind. One who has a disciplined mind lives in the center of the hurricane. Come, and let's learn about dog training for the mind. Kudos. Recently, I've been interested in the various mechanics of the mind. I knew that the Buddhists were experts at this. I found this document on the internet. My baseline information came from this document. I was very impressed by it. I took this document and added some of my own commentary to it. This is from their website, Tushita Meditation Center. Tushita is a center for the study and practice of Buddhism from the Tibetan Mahayana tradition. We're located in northern India, in the forested hills above the town of MacLeod, Ganji, Dharmasala, the seat and exile of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. Now, I'm not sure who wrote this document. <coughs> the Tibetans have been using this document for centuries. Dear Tushita Meditation Center, Recently, I've been interested in the various mechanics of the mind. I knew that the Buddhists were experts at this. I found this document on the internet. My baseline information came from this document. I was very impressed by it. I took this document and added some of my own commentary to it. This is from your webpage. Could you please tell me who wrote this wonderful document? I would love to give the author credit. Any background info would be appreciated. I'm including the PDF and audio for this book. It's a book in progress. I publish my work for free. I would love to do a Zoom day session someday if you're open to it. Richard Fletcher Faith. Faith is a mental factor that serves as an antidote of non-faith and is of three types, faith of conviction, admiring faith, and aspirational faith. Faith of conviction assures people that their work matters. They know if they focus all their energy and attention in a determined direction, it will yield results. This belief does more than put people at ease. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy of success. Admiring faith is the mental factor in which the object of faith is held to be particular, excellent, and dear. It is awareness that is endowed with joy and delight. Aspirational faith is a mental factor 
that considers the object of faith to be attainable and is characteristic by a strong aspiration to attain it. In general, faith is a state of mind free from the turmoil of mental afflictions. It acts as the basis for generating aspiration to attaining positive qualities that have not been generated yet and for increasing any such aspiration already generated. With the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. What happens to you, you can be in a place that everything will be alright. In times of trouble, God is there, holding you in His arms. This is not blind faith. Faith builds day by day. As the years go by, you can see how God is a part of your life. You are never alone. Lessons keep coming your way. We can never say, I've mastered life. Life always has a curveball along the way. Yet, we do have faith. We have that experience that we're not alone. We feel that moment by moment, faith will lead us along this path of life. We are wired for God. We are the only creature on earth that are wired for self-discovery. There is a master electrician who wired our body in his image. You contain the blueprints of life. Does this, this excite you? <clears throat> I hope it does. You are not alone. You are built to drive your car of life. The car wasn't meant to sit in your garage for your entire life. There is a vast highway of the universe that is waiting to be discovered. Listen to your body. It speaks to you. We have ignored its signals for far too long. The body is intelligent. It is way smarter than we think. It's always there giving you advice. When you're about to get a cold, the body will be safe to go to bed an hour earlier. I would take that advice. If you do, most likely the cold will not manifest. The body knows what food is good for you. Unfortunately, we are junk food addicts. We don't take any responsibility for our health. Remember, this is the only body you have. Your life would be a hundred times better if you would learn to listen to your body. It's up to you to solve this riddle. I once had a grand teacher who said, Meditation is perfect concentration upon a perfect point. How elegantly said. Imagine the mind is like a tuning fork. Whatever it touches, it vibrates at that frequency. Have you ever felt that material happiness is finite? Imagine the car you've always dreamed of, a yellow Ferrari. In the beginning, it brings you so much joy. You take all your friends around the block for a spin. Day and night, you are satisfied. One day, you notice that a little dissatisfaction has entered your door. Day by day, your yellow Ferrari becomes a hassle. How many times to the shop? I need an oil change. My brakes need changing. The transmission just went out. Everything material wears out. Material happiness 
will soon lead to pain. Does this mean we can't enjoy the comforts of life? Do we have to live a life of a hermit? How can we live in this world and live in absolute joy? Meditation brings an individual to the center of the hurricane. The winds of change are blowing, yet perfect calm resides inside. This is your true state. Absolute joy, total bliss. Your mind is vibrating with the word of life. The five omnipresent mental factors. The five omnipresent mental factors are one, feeling, two, discrimination, discernment, three, contact, four, intention, five, attention. These are omnipresent because they're always there with every mind. One, feeling. What is a feeling? The Buddhists say a feeling is a mental factor that experiences the object as pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. They say it's impossible to comprehend an object without any one of these three types of feelings. Our feelings are what drive us. What we are feeling is the driv driven force behind our physical, verbal, and mental actions. A pleasant feeling in induces attachment. An unpleasant feeling <coughs> induces anger. A neutral feeling induces ignorance. Meditation is the tool that unlocks the key to intuition. Intuition is the key that drives a being to make proper actions. Meditation connects one to the inner feelings of love and compassion. There is a well within <coughs> that we can tap into. One can learn how to transform inner feelings and bypass the external feelings of objects. This is pure alchemy. A wise man simply smiles at life. He has nothing to prove in this state. He has reached the state of being one with internal feelings. Meditation is the key to reprogram the subconscious mind. To <coughs> discrimination, discernment. What is discrimination? Discrimination is a mental factor that discerns the object. What this means, it can distinguish this object from other objects. The mind has a warehouse of all the known objects. As a database, discernment serves as a search mechanism to find the particular object that matches these criteria. The mind can distinguish one object from another. Usually, the subconscious mind is involved in using discrimination. The goal is to develop inner discrimination through meditation. One can learn how to discern a person's lifestyle to be in harmony with a mind-body connection. There are many levels of discernment. A human being whose focus internally advances many levels of refinement in this area. One goes from the dense level to the subtle level and ultimately to the very subtle level. These levels of understanding helps one's pro progress up the path. Intention. Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about intention a lot in his seminars. What is intention? Intention is a mental factor that moves or directs awareness to the object, mostly a seven by the subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind performs around 95% of our actions. Our intentions is mostly on remote control. We can reprogram our intentions in everyday life. Western scientists have come to the same wisdom as Buddhists. True intention leads one 
on this precious journey of discovering the jewel within. Without proper intention, one could not take a step towards discovering one's true nature. I call it everyday normal intention, dense intention. It is the dense glue that binds us to our mental state of being. Our intention binds us to objects. Whether these objects are beneficial or not, our intention propels us to the object, much like magnets do. 4. Contact What is contact? Contact is a mental factor that connects or meets the object of the awareness. To see any object with your two eyes, one must first make contact with your eyes to that particular object. This is the contact with the eyes to any external object. Internal contact is using your internal consciousness to make contact with a state of emptiness, which in reality is not empty. This process brings one's awareness into the jewel that lies within. Moment by moment, one can consciously connect this inner state of existence. Attention. What is attention? Attention is a mental factor to remain on a particular object. By doing so, the awareness will be focused on the particular object. The world of concentration and mindfulness allows the mind to remain on a particular object. Most human minds have poor attention rates. The mind is focused for only a few seconds. It's like a laser that its light is diffused. When a, first, when a person first starts to meditate, one discovers his intention wanders to and fro. In the East, they call it monkey mind. There is a phrase, the more attention one focuses on, one becomes. One of my quotes I say a lot is in the beginning, you will pay attention to the universe. After a while, the universe starts paying attention to you. The Buddhists understand the power of attention and how to utilize it properly. Most of the world doesn't understand the power of attention. Feeling. The definition of feeling is the following. Now, an emotional state or reaction, a feeling of joy, similar love, care, affection, fondness, tenderness, warmth, warmness, emotion, sentiment, Passion, adoration, reverence, devotion, compassion, sympathy, empathy, understanding, concern, solitude, tender heartedness, brotherly love, pity, sorrow, commensuration, condolences, too. A belief, especially a vague or a rational one. He had the feeling that he was being watched. Similar. Notion, inkling, hunch, fancy, apprehension, persistent, premonition, idea, vague idea, impression, gut feeling. Feeling in one's bones, funny feeling, sixth sense, adjective, showing emotion or sensitivity, yet a warm and feeling heart, similar, sensitive, warm, warm-hearted, 
tender, <coughs> tender hearted, <coughs> caring, soft hearted, sympathetic, compassionate, understanding, empathetic, responsive, receptive, intuitive, thoughtful, emotional, demonstrative, demonstrative, <laughs> passionate, sensible. Well, just think we could tap into these qualities in each and every moment. The funny thing is, it is possible. Discernment. <laughs> Discernment is the ability to attain sharp perceptions or to judge well. Discernment is really needed in the world today. Today our world has tons of spin doctors. They spin the truth to whatever direction they want it to be. To be quite honest, discernment should be taught in school. So much that we are taught is incorrect or biased. We spend our entire lives chasing a carrot on a stick. The certainty is built in, yet the gauge doesn't quite work. We are paying attention externally. Discernment is a state of mind. When the mind is focused solely on the external world, cloud vision occurs. Man then has a tendency not to judge very well. Our wish to, to judge something is tainted due to the glasses we are wearing. When one truly resides in the present moment, the glasses disappear. The mystics of old call this clear vision. Note, this is a practical experience. You may think that these are just words, yet there is a practical experience to have in your daily life. The universe is open to you. Are you open to the universe? Intention Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about intention a lot in his seminars. What is intention? Intention is a mental factor that moves or directs the awareness to the object. Mostly it's done by the subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind performs around 90%, 95% of our actions. Our intention is mostly on remote control. We can reprogram our intentions on our everyday life. Western scientists have come to the same wisdom as Buddhists. True intention leads one on this precious journey of discovering the jewel within. Without proper intention, one could not take a step toward discovering one's true nature. Like all everyday normal intention, <coughs> dense intention. It is the dense glue that binds us to our mental state of mind. Our intention binds us to objects. Wherever these objects are beneficial or not, our intention propels us to the object, much like magnets do.
Intention. The definition of intention is the following. 1a. What one intends to do or brings about. b. The object for which a prayer, mass, or pious act is offered. 2. <coughs> a determination to act in a certain way. Resolve. 3. Intentions plural. Purpose with respect to marriage. 4. Import significance. <coughs> 5. A process or manner of healing of incised wounds. 6. Concept. Especially a concept considered as the product of intention directed to an object of knowledge. <coughs> Without a proper intention, one will never <coughs> discover the jewel within. The jewel is there, you are there, yet the jewel is still hid inside of you. The proper intention is a means to propel you to discover the jewel within. It is the glue which binds us to higher states of mind. Most humans have dense intentions which binds them to the five senses. They are texting of <coughs> on the free way of life, oblivious of their true nature. The wise man cultivates inner intention daily. The fruits of his effort leads to enlightenment. Ponder this over. What is your intention in life? What are you focused on? Contact. What is contact? Contact is a mental factor that contacts or meets the object of the awareness. To see any object with your two eyes, one must make contact with your eyes to a particular object. This is the contact with the eyes to any external object. Internal contact is using your internal consciousness to make contact with a state of emptiness, which in reality is not empty. This process brings one awareness to the jewel that lies within, moment by moment, one can consciously contact this inner state of existence. Contact. The definition of contact is the following. Now, the state or condition of physically touching, the state or condition of communicating or meeting. Verb. Communicate with someone, typically in order to give or receive specific information. Touch. What is the ultimate contact? You may touch everything, every object, externally in the world, and yet you will still ultimately experience a void inside of you. <coughs> a wise man consciously touches the jewel within and gets a light along the way. Attention. What is attention? Attention is a mental factor to remain on a particular object. By doing so, the awareness will be focused on the particular object. The world of concentration and mindfulness allows the mind to remain on a particular object. Most human minds have poor attention rates. The mind is focused for only a few seconds. It's like a laser that its light is diffused. When a person first starts to meditate, one discovers his attention wanders to and fro. In the East, they call it monkey mind. There is a phrase, the more attention one focuses on, one becomes. 
One of my quotes I say a lot is in the beginning, you pay attention to the universe. After a while, the universe starts paying attention to you. The Buddhist understands the power of attention and how to utilize it properly. Most of the world truly doesn't understand the power of attention. Attention. The definition of attention <clears throat> is the following. Notice taken of someone or something, the regarding of someone or something as interesting or important. Similar. Awareness. Notice. Observation. Consciousness. Heed. Recognition. Regard, attentiveness, curiosity, inquisitiveness, listen, be attentive, attend, concentrate on, concentrate on hearing. Where is our attention placed today? Where are we as a society going? When truth becomes fiction, and fiction becomes truth. We have lost the way. Our minds have become scattered. A scattered mind is like leaves blowing in the wind. We can't see properly. Our attention span is so short. How can we solve the problems of today when we are texting on the freeway of life? This should be common sense. Yet our nation is divided. I'm right. And you're wrong. That is the problem. Our attention is to always blame the other person. We see only a small piece of the puzzle, yet we think we see the entire puzzle. What are you going to do about this? The five object asserting mental factors. The five object certain mental factors are one, aspiration, two, resolve, three, mindfulness, recollection, four, concentration, five, wisdom. They are object ascertain because they realize their objects or are induced by awareness that realize their object. Aspiration. Aspiration is a mental factor that focuses on a desired object and takes a strong interest in it. It has the function to serve as a basic for enthusiasm if one wants to go far on the spiritual path. One must have aspirations. One who is not developing enthusiastic will not go very far in this path. This also goes with life in general. Enthusiasm is one of the main keys. One who is weak in this area will develop a weak mind. A weak mind will not get you far in life. Aspiration. The definition of aspiration is the following. Noun. A hope or ambition of achieving something. The yawning gulf between aspiration 
and reality. Similar, desire, hope, longing, yearning, anchoring, urge, wish, aim, ambition, expectation, inclination, objective, goal, target, end, object, dream, to, medicine, the action or process of drawing breath. One needs to be full of aspiration to live a fulfilled life. When humanity punches the snooze button over and over, that is a signal, my friend. Our ca car is running on gas fumes. We need to fill our tank. What do you do when you are in a situation? We all have those off days where, where if everything goes where everything goes south. How do you handle that? Resolve. The definition of resolve is as follows. Settle or find a solution to a problem, dispute, or contentious matter. When this takes place, the mind will not be distracted. Mindfulness is the process of resolving internal conflicts, thereby clearing the mind. Resolve. The definition of resolve is as follows. Verb. Settle or find a solution to a problem, dispute, or contentious matter. Come <coughs> to the conclusion. Settle on a plan of action. Noun. Firm determination to do something. When a person has a problem, it's like a constant mosquito buzzing and harassing you. It's an irritant. You can't quite shake it off. The only way to do so is to resolve the problem. Easier <coughs> said than done. This is where the art of my <coughs> mindfulness comes in. Mindfulness brings one to the center of the hurricane. In that state, all ir <coughs> irritations of the mind get resolved. The problem may still be there, yet it can't touch you. This is why I say the spiritual path is the most practical path. What can be more practical than getting rid of the mosquito bites of the mind in a clear state and vision? One can overcome any curveballs thrown your way. The times your problems define you. You go around and around in your mind getting worried. All this does is make you more stressed and uptight. You're not a happy camper. Who likes to sleep on the ground and be attacked by mosquitoes? The wise man has a mosquito-proof tent with a magnificent bed. He sleeps like a baby at night. Which one do you choose? Remember, you do have a choice. You have free will. Mindfulness Recollection Mindfulness is a mental factor that does not forget a familiar object and repeatedly brings it to mind. It serves as the basic for concentration. 
The ancient ones used this state to recall them their true nature over and over again until they became it. Mindfulness is the process and one of the tools for discovering one's true nature. Mindfulness. This is the dictionary definition of mindfulness. The quality, the state of being conscious or aware of something. Their mindfulness of the wider cinematic tradition. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. I remember in the early 2000s I went to Phoenix, Arizona for a business trip. Back then I was working for Charles Schwab. There were probably around a couple of thousand employees attending the conference. One day of the conference they had some classes that you could choose to attend. One of them was mindfulness. To be honest at that time I heard of this Buddhist term yet I never understood its meaning. It was a great lecture. I was amazed that Charles Schwab even would present this topic. Since then, mindfulness has hit the mainstream. It's kind of a buzzword right now. You see it on commercials on TV for selling products. But what is mindfulness? According to the dictionary definition, a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledge and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. Let's break this down a little. A mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. How do you focus your awareness on the present moment? What is the present moment? Does mankind ever truly connect to the present moment? Just think, in the quantum field, it is beyond time and space. Past, present, and future are one. The Buddhists have been studying mindfulness for thousands of years. They have been known to tap into the quantum field for thousands of years. Mind you, they didn't call it the quantum field. They might have called it enlightenment or a state of nirvana. I remember about 15 years ago, I read this incredible Buddhist book called Crystal Clear. This book talked about the various stages of enlightenment. Now this could be a rumor. I can't prove it, but the Buddhist has some doubts to release this book to the public. This was utmost sacred knowledge. They decided to release it because the techniques were so simple. They involved concentrating on your breath. Mind you, this is an ancient technique used in meditating practices all around the world. But have we ever pondered what is the power behind the breath that is keeping you and the universe alive? The universe is conscious. I'm sure you think I'm a broken record when I say you are the universe. You just don't know it. But that's the truth. <laughs> when a person begins to learn how to meditate on his breath, transformation starts to occur in the mind, body, and soul connection. One is tapping into the quantum field. Mindfulness is a state of bringing that inner awareness into the present state of mind. It's very subtle in the beginning. Mind you, your circuits are slowly being rewired. I often say that in the beginning, you meditate on God. At some point in time, God begins to meditate on you. You see, the more attention you put on something, the more attention is focused back to you. Mindfulness is a state of being in the quantum field, moment by moment. There are probably an infinite amount of stages of mindfulness. Let's dive deeper into this definition. 
a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations used as a therapeutic technique. Meditation is a stepping stone to calmly acknowledge and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and body sensations. This is where we can truly rewire the body and mind. When one is directing, is when one is directly connected to the quantum field, one's emotions are a bliss, love, kindness, compassion, and gratitude. There are probably an infinite amount of positive emotion, emotions which we aren't even aware of. Just think, in this state, thousands of positive chemicals are being released into your body. Moment by moment in meditation, one has the opportunity to rewire our mind-body connections to be in harmony with the quantum field. Every person on Earth is hardwired for this. In order for this to happen, we must be aware. This is what the whole book is about. Our subconsciousness is 95% running the show. No wonder we have so many problems in the world today. Mindfulness is a way out of this solution. You could say a being, like the Christ or Buddha, learn how to be in perfect harmony with the quantum field. Yes, they didn't call it that back then. They used different technology, terminology. The essence is the same. This is just the tip of the iceberg on this discussion. Ponder this over. Wisdom. Wisdom is a mental factor that thoroughly discerns the positive and negative qualities of an object, its functions, characteristics, and so forth. There are four types of wisdom, that which is inborn, that which is the result of listening or learning, that which is the result of reflection, contemplation, and that is the result of meditation. Wisdom. The definition of wisdom is as follows. The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. Listen to his words of wisdom. Wisdom is different from information. We are inundated with information. So much can be true, yet so much is false. Many people like to spin the truth. Many peace people pass on information as truth, yet they know it is a lie. How does one become wise during these difficult times? So many people force their information on you. The wise man understands only by entering the state of silence does true wisdom arise. In silence lies the infinite fountain of wisdom. The wise man just smiles at life. He has nothing to prove. Concentration. Concentration is a mental factor that remains its single pointed on its object. It acts as the basics for the increase of wisdom and of bringing mundane and super-mundane phenomena under control. Meditation is a tool that allows one to develop single-minded attention to the jewel within. Without proper concentration, one can't tune in to our true existence. There are infinite levels of concentration. They go from the densest to the sublime. Concentration. Concentration is the action or power of focusing one's attention or mental effort. 
in order to hit the bullseye in life, one must concentrate. Meditation is perfect concentration upon a perfect point. An incredible teacher said this many moons ago. Mankind has the ability to focus on the quantum field. The hardware and software have been there since your birth. And fortunately, we have been paying attention only to the external. Mind you, most of the time we are paying attention to our cell phones in life. We are one more layer distant from our true nature. Already, our subconscious is running 95% of the show, and now we created another layer. <laughs> wow, how intelligent are we? Look, I'm not against cell phones, yet I see everyone looking down at their phones while walking. People texting while driving. The whole universe is alive and we are dead to it. <laughs> now, that's sad. Are you happy with the state of the world today? Only you can change. <clears throat> Nobody can do it for you. The 11 virtuous mental factors are Faith Shame, self-respect Consideration for others Non-attachment, detachment, non-hatred, non-ignorance, diligence, mental pliancy, conscientiousness, equanimity, non-harmfulness. When any of the 11 mental factors manifest, they're non Commitment, my main mind, and other mental factors also becomes virtuous. Faith. Faith is a mental factor that serves as the antidote of non-faith, and is of three types. Faith of conviction, admiring faith, and aspirational faith. Faith of conviction assures people that their work matters. They know if they focus all their energy and attention in a determined direction, it will yield results. This belief does more than put people at ease. It creates a self-fulfilling prophecy of success. Admiring faith is the mental factor in which the object of faith is held to be particular, excellent, and dear. It is awareness that is endowed with joy and delight. Aspirational faith is a mental factor that considers the object of faith to be attainable and is characteristic by a strong aspiration to attain it. In general, faith is a state of mind free from the turmoil of mental afflictions. It acts as the basis for generating aspiration to attaining positive qualities that have not been generated yet and for increasing any such aspiration already generated. With the faith of a mustard seed, you can move out. What happens to you, you can be in a place that everything will be over. In times of trouble, God is there holding you in its arms. This is not blind faith. Faith builds day by day. As the years go by, you can see how God is a part of your life. You are never alone. Lessons keep coming your way. We can never say, I've mastered life. Life always has a curveball along the way. Yet, we do have faith. We have that experience that we're not alone. We feel that moment by moment, faith will lead us along this path of life. We are wired for God. We are the only creature on earth that are wired for self-discovery. There is a master electrician who wired our body 
in His image. You contain the blueprints of life. Does this excite you? <clears throat> I hope it does. You are not alone. You are built to drive your car of life. The car wasn't meant to sit in your garage for your entire life. There is a vast highway of the universe that is waiting to be discovered. Listen to your body. It speaks to you. We have ignored its signals for far too long. The body is intelligent. It is way smarter than you think. It's always there giving you advice. When you're about to get a cold, the body will be safe to go to bed an hour earlier. I would take that advice. If you do, most likely the cold will not manifest. The body knows what's food is good for you. Unfortunately, we are junk food addicts. We don't take any responsibility for our health. Remember, this is the only body you have. Your life would be a hundred times better if you would learn to listen to your body. It's up to you to solve this riddle. Two, shame, self-respect. Shame is a mental factor that refrains from non-virtuous actions out of reasons concerning oneself, i.e. out of self-respect. It has the function of restraining harmful conduct of body, speech, and mind, and serves as a basis for moral discipline. Our previous administration completely was lacking in shame. A wise man constantly monitors his actions to be in a state of self-respect. 3. Consideration for others Consideration is a mental factor that refrains from non-virtuous actions out of consideration for others. This mental factor is very similar in nature to shame, except that it restrains one from engaging in negative actions through considering that if one were to commit a particular action, it would harm others. The golden rule is the principle of treating others as one wants to be treated. It is a maxim that is found in most religions and cultures. It can be considered an ethic of reciprocity in some religions. The biblical rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Matthew 7, 12. This is the state of mind that can be cultivated. When one advances in the video game of life, one understands and is conscious to be considerate towards others. 4. Non-attachment, detachment. Non-attachment is a mental factor that is the opponent to the mental factor of attachment. It withdraws us from the compulsive grasping and clinging towards the object desires and from the wish to possess them. I once had a grand teacher who said, Meditation is perfect concentration upon a perfect point. How elegantly said. Imagine the mind is like a tuning fork. Whatever it touches, it vibrates at that frequency. Have you ever felt that material happiness is finite? Imagine the car you've always dreamed of, a yellow Ferrari. In the beginning, it brings you so much joy. You take all your friends around the block for a spin. Day and night, you are satisfied. One day, you notice that a little dissatisfaction has entered your door. Day by day, 
your yellow Ferrari becomes a hassle. How many times to the shop? I need an oil change. My brakes need changing. The transmission just went out. Everything material wears out. Material happiness will soon lead to pain. Does this mean we can't enjoy the comforts of life? Do we have to live a life of a hermit? How can we live in this world and live in absolute joy? Meditation brings an individual to the center of the hurricane. The winds of change are blowing, yet perfect calm resides inside. This is your true state. Absolute joy, total bliss. Your mind is vibrating with the word of life. Five, non-hatred. Non-hatred is a mental factor that is opponent to the mental factor of anger and serves as the basis for increasing love and compassion. In general, there are three objects of anger. Someone who is inflicting harm on us, two, the harm itself, and three, the instrument which harms us, e.g. weapons. Upon recognizing one of these three things as the cause of our suffering, we generate dislike for the object and becomes angry towards it. Non-hatred is the opposite response without blindly <coughs> reacting to the situation and maintains clarity of mind. This is characterized by love, kindness, and patient acceptance. Mind you, this is our natural state, but we are so conditioned to get angry. One has to practice the art of meditation to develop love and compassion towards all. By discovering the jewel within, one begins to slowly drop his anger. Non-hatred. The definition of non-hatred is as follows. Non-hatred is a consciousness lacking the intent of harm towards sentient beings, sufferings, and the source of suffering. It has eliminated the generation of hatred. That, my friend, is desperately needed in the world today. There is a reason why the wise man simply smiles. He has nothing to say or prove. In that state of awareness, hatred is long gone. Hatred or non-hatred is a state of mind. It must be cultivated. When you were born, you didn't have a half ounce of hatred in you. The world around you taught you how to hate. You took it hook, line, and sinker. It's not your fault. Yet you must clear yourself of the hatred. It does not serve you and the world. In fact, it's putting more gasoline on the fire of life. When one can see the interconnectedness of all things, one drops the hatred. This is your true nature. What happened? Why, as a society, do we contain so much hatred? Is this serving any purpose? Maybe it's time for internal housekeeping. We have garbage everywhere. Hatred has a putrid smell. You can smell it a million miles away. Love is the perfume of life. It is the essence of all. 
A wise man takes out the trash daily. The dump truck comes and picks it up. Over time, one fully embraces the perfume of life. By doing so, sweet fragrance fills the air. The mind, body, and soul are in harmony. This, my friend, is your true nature. Six, non-ignorance. Non-ignorance is a mental factor that's characterized by clarity and sharpness and that serves as the opponent to the mental factor of ignorance. It is itself not a form of wisdom, but a lucid quality of awareness that accompanies wisdom and bears a relationship of similarity with either enthusiasm or diligence. Discovering your true nature brings clarity to one's life. It's like dusting off the mirror of life. Non-ignorance. The definition of non-ignorance is as follows. Non-ignorance is a mental factor that is characterized by clarity and sharpness and that serves as an opponent to the mental factor of ignorance. In reality, it is clarity in mind. It is called at times crystal clear. Ignorance is a lack of knowledge or information. Major problems happen in this world when the majority of people forget their true nature. Unfortunately, we aren't aware of it. Because of this factor, we can't see what we can't see. Then we say our awareness is normal and clear. I find it funny how so few people want to understand the basic laws of the mind. Why should I want to do that? Yet your mind <coughs> is the instrument to decipher wisdom and actions to take. This is not a serious path, yet it requires discipline. A happy dog is a disciplined dog. An angry dog is an undisciplined dog. Proper training and discipline are needed to find the inner jewel. One can never find true wisdom externally. One can only find it inside of you. That's where the buried treasure lies. We have been taught to only focus on the external, therefore we live in ignorance. If this is not so, why is there so much chaos alive today in this world? Ask yourself, what are we missing? This knowledge has never been taught in our schools. We are taught only to focus externally on our happiness. Look where that has brought us today. We are sawing off the branch we are sitting on, yet we can't stop it. We need to send that text on the freeway of life. We don't have time to change or think about our consequences. My vacation is coming up. I've planned this for a long time. I don't have time to think about this. What a waste of time. Ponder this over. Maybe, maybe we got this picture backwards. 7. Diligence Diligence is a mental factor that acts the antidote to laziness and delights in engaging in virtuous actions. Diligence is a joyous, enthusiastic, and dynamic quality of mind necessary to effectively accomplish any spiritual growth and understanding. Man's tendency to bring to be lazy brings him to a state of apathy. Apathy is a state where one hates waking up in the morning to a brand new day.
Diligence. The definition of diligence is as follows. Now, careful and persistent work or effort. Similar, conscientious, industrious, rigor, rigorous. One must be diligent to have a healthy mind. A person can never rest on your, <coughs> your laurels. Curveballs will always be thrown your way. You will stumble and fall. Just pick yourself up. The goal is to quickly recover and go forward. Nobody is perfect. Yes, perfection lies inside. Yet, nobody is perfect. We all make mistakes. Laugh at yourself. Have a great sense of humor. Enjoy the ride. Be like a little child. <coughs> Don't be so serious. Yet be diligent in your actions. Don't give up the ship. Just put your hand on the rudder. Persistence, diligence will sell you home. Eight, mental pliancy. The definition of pliancy is as follows. Adjective, bending readily, flexible, supple, adaptable. She manipulated the pliant clay, easily influenced, yielding to others, compliant. He has a pliant nature. To be honest, this is probably the first time I have ever used this word. Mental pliancy is a mental factor that eliminates mental and physical rigidity and thereby enables the mind to apply itself to be a wholesome object in whatever manner it wishes. It makes the mind flexible and quick and serves as the basic for all meditations directly associated with mental stability and penetrative insight. Mental and physical rigidity is an inept state of mind and body which is characterized by mental and physical heaviness and the inability to do what one wishes. One must learn how to be like a reed bending in the wind. Most of humanity has shallow reeds shallow roots so the winds of the mind can blow it over. Look at politics today. This is a perfect example of a society lost in being rigid. It's like a rigid statue. It can't bend at all. Pliancy. The definition of pliancy is as follows. Adjective. Bending readily. Flexible. Subtle. Adaptable. It seems like our society is cast in stone. We are rigid in life. We can't see the forest from the trees. Society is not flexible to new ideas. Therefore, our minds and bodies are stiff. It is not supple. We hold on to dear life to our points of view on love. Anyone who doesn't have a point of view is our enemy. It seems to be getting worse in our society. Some say the Capitol billion building riot was a walk in the park. Despite hundreds of videos Still some say no violence occurred. Truth is fiction, and fiction is truth. Our mental state is as solid as a rock. Mind you, that's not a good state of mind. And that state 
it's impossible to be sub flexible <coughs> and adaptable. Humanity doesn't look at a person's state of mind. The media only looks externally, not the other way around. Maybe it's about, about time to look seriously at the inner video game of life. Currently, we are stuck at the chaos level with no end in sight. Our mental chaotic state <coughs> causes the world at large to be chaotic. We are far from having a human society. The word human means divine mind. Man means mind. We haven't even come close to training our minds. Look at the world around us, and the world is spinning out of control. Yet the inner jewel exists inside of you. It's always been there, my friend. Why are we in apathy when the solution is staring us in the face? Master the video game of life, and you will be a happy camper. Nine, Conscien conscientiousness. The definition of conscientiousness is as follows. The quality of wishing to do one's work or duty well. And thirdly, his conscientiousness is second to none, and he regularly makes up follow-up calls to ensure everything is going well. Conscientiousness is a mental factor that cherishes the accumulation of positive actions and guards the mind against that which gives rise to afflictions. Independent on diligence, it thus familiarizes the commitment, main mind, and other mental factors with virtue and guards it from non-virtue. In guarding the mind, it is similar in some other ways to shame, self-respect, and consideration for others, except that is not based on a particular reason. Rather, it is a mere fundamental protective quality. This mental state should be embraced by the world today. It would help bring harmony in the actions of humans. Conscientiousness. The definition of conscientiousness is as follows. The conditions or quality of being conscientious. Apparently, the secret to a happy, healthy adulthood is learned early on to deal with disappointment and developing character traits. Persistence, curiosity, conscientiousness, optimism, and self-control to surround it. <coughs> Dina Pan. Not surprisingly, they have found that people blessed with innate conscientiousness, meaning that they are organized and predictable, typically <coughs> eat better and live longer than people who are disorderly. Gretchen Reynolds. This trait is an incredible trait to cultivate. When a person is conscious of his action, his life blooms like a flower. His actions come from his heart and wisdom within. Most of humanity is driven by the subconscious mind. In fact, over 95% of our actions come from it. One can be innocent as a child and have great wisdom. Great wisdom comes from discovering the jewel within. A conscientious person blames no one for his problems. His mind is calm and peaceful. A person who hasn't developed this trait tends to live 
life out of control. This person tends to grasp that straws. The slight engine of life is backfiring. The spark plugs are not in sync. Life is extremely challenging. <coughs> Remember, the more you pay attention to something, the more attention it will pay to you. This trait can be cultivated over time. Life is free-flowing, yet we must pay attention to our thoughts and actions. In each and every moment, we must fine-tune the guitar of life. To be an incredible guitar player, one must make a great effort. To master the guitar of life, we must practice in each and every moment. Mind you, this takes an innocent of a child to do so. Yes, this is a paradox. Life has many paradoxes. Ponder this over. It can and will take you far on this journey of life. Ten. Equanimity. Equanimity is a mental factor that is the antidote to mental sinking and mental excitement. It has the function to keep the mind balanced and calm without letting it become carelessly distracted or unclear and dull. Also, it settles and leaves the mind at rest upon a wholesome object. The wise person learns the state of equanimity. This brings balance to the mind, body, and soul connection. Yes, the Buddhists don't say soul, but that is the closest word I have. A calm mind and a balanced mind brings tranquility to this world. Equanimity. The definition of equanimity is as follows. 1. Evenness of mind, especially under stress. Nothing could disturb his equanimity. 2. Right disposition, balance, physical equanimity. Well, have we ever as a society missed the mark? This is the definition of sin, to miss the target. The opposite is the bullseye. I love the evenness of mind, especially under stress. Did you know that anger creates over 1,500 harmful chemi chemicals into your chemistry set? By the way, that's your own body. Stress harms both your body and mind. Both of them are affected by it. Over time, disease is a state of being constantly stressed out. No wonder when we get old, so many people complain about their ailments. Look, I'm not saying you will never get sick, but you can slow down the aging process. Mystics have strived for equanimity for thousands of years. The Buddhists have even documented the various states of mind of being tranquil. Modern day scientists recently have joined on with this ancient bandwagon. Balance is the key. Having the right disposition is the key. It seems like <coughs> potentially the Buddhists and James were right. A calm body and calm mind are the secrets of life. I was talking to a dear old friend yesterday. Somehow we brought up the subject that human beings only see and hear only 1% of the light spectrum. The universe is singing to us while we are texting on the freeway of life. Isn't that ironic? Brahmanan said, I have witnessed such a great wonder. A well suspended in the sky 
but which ambrosia ceaselessly flows. A lame person climbs to it without any ladder and, drink, and drinks jugs of that nectar. Gong, conscious and kettle drums ring out without being played by anyone. The deaf hears them and becomes ecstatic. They lose track of body and mind. Up there is a palace without foundation, which is radiant with light. The blind sees it and are so overjoyed they can't stop talking about it. In that place, a person dies, yet continues to live and has strength without eating food. Brahmanan says that only a rare soul can understand his tale. True equanimity exists inside of you. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Eleven, non-harmfulness. Non-harmfulness is a mental factor that lacking any intention to harm wishes for sentient beings to be free from suffering. Therefore, non-harmlessness is equivalent to compassion, the pure wish that others may be free from suffering. non-harmfulness. The definition of non-harmfulness is as follows. Benign, harmless, innocuous, inoffensive, safe, non-dangerous, non-injurious. The intention is to create a safe and harmless environment for all. There is a threat of love tying us all together. When a person connects to this threat, automatically a person's awareness is not harmful. One recognizes that in reality, we are all the same. Yet when we focus only externally, we can't see the truth, the true vision in life. We create separation. From a state of separation, we tend to get violent. Anger is among this land. For many people, anger is the norm. Many people think it's funny to flag the other person. They get a kick out of it. Yet, that is a violent act. When we create division on purpose, we are adding gasoline to the fire of life. Many wise men understood these principles. Unfortunately, today, it's a ghost shadow. It's like we remember this concept, but it's so far away from our mental reality. It's like a silent whisper in the hurricane winds of the mind. Presently, it's very hard to hear. We get bombarded with worldly and chaotic affairs of the mind. Usually, the loudest gets paid attention first. A silent whisper never gets paid attention. I say common sense is uncommon. Violence has hit the mainstream for a long time. The truth has been distorted. Take the Capitol building riot. Some say it was simply <coughs> a walk in the park. Truth has become fiction, and fiction has become truth. For many Americans, they are fading away from the truth. The more you say this, the more you will believe this. Contact. What is contact? Contact is a mental factor that contacts or meets the object of the awareness. 
To see any object with your two eyes, one must make contact with your eyes to a particular object. This is the contact with the eyes to any external object. Internal contact is using your internal consciousness to make contact with a state of emptiness, which in reality is not empty. This process brings one awareness to the jewel that lies within. Moment by moment, one can consciously contact this inner state of existence. Contact. The definition of contact is the following. Now, the state or condition of physically touching. The state or condition of communicating or meeting. Verb. Communicate with someone, typically in order to give or receive specific information. Touch. What is the ultimate contact? You may touch everything, every object externally in the world, and yet you will still ultimately experience a void inside of you. <coughs> a wise man consciously touches the jewel within and gets a light along the way. Attention. What is attention? Attention is a mental factor to remain on a particular object. By doing so, the awareness will be focused on the particular object. The world of concentration and mindfulness allows the mind to remain on a particular object. Most human minds have poor attention rates. The mind is focused for only a few seconds. It's like a laser that its light is diffused. When a person first starts to meditate, one discovers his attention wanders to and fro. In the East, they call it monkey mind. There is a phrase, the more attention one focuses on, one becomes. One of my quotes I say a lot is, in the beginning, you pay attention to the universe. After a while, the universe starts paying attention to you. The Buddhist understands the power of attention and how to utilize it properly. Most of the world truly doesn't understand the power of attention. Attention. The definition of attention <clears throat> is the following. Notice taken of someone or something, the regarding of someone or something as interesting or important. Similar. Awareness. Notice. Observation. Consciousness. Heed. Recognition. Regard, attentiveness, curiosity, inquisitiveness, listen, be attentive, attend, concentrate on, concentrate on hearing. Where is our attention placed today? Where are we as a society going? When truth becomes fiction, and fiction becomes truth. We have lost the way. Our minds have become scattered. A scattered mind is like leaves blowing in the wind. We can't see properly. Our attention span is so short. How can we solve the problems of today when we are texting on the freeway of life? This should be common sense. Yet our nation 
is divided. I'm right and you're wrong. That is the problem. Our attention is to always blame the other person. We see only a small piece of the puzzle, yet we think we see the entire puzzle. What are you going to do about this? The Six Primary Afflictions A Sangha says in his Compendium of Knowledge, an affliction is defined as a phenomenon that when it arises, arises with the characteristic of being disturbing, and that through arising disturbs the mental continuum. Afflictions are mental factors and mental consciousness whose function is to disturb or unsettle the mind. Therefore, afflictions such as ignorance, anger, attachment, jealousy, arrogance, etc., not only induce contaminated actions, i.e. karma, that lead to future sufferings, they also create problems the moment they manifest, for they immediately create mental agitation and destroy the mind's peace and tranquility. Furthermore, the root cause of afflictions is ignorance, which is an affliction itself. More specifically, the ignorance that misperceives the eye and mind or other phenomena to exist inherently is the root of all other afflictions, and thus the main cause for the arising. <coughs> ignorance creates mental agitation. At times, it seems like a pesky mosquito constantly buzzing inside and biting you. For some humans, it's a state of utter despair. Why aren't we taught about this in schools? Maybe we're all neurotic in some shape, way, or form, and we think it is normal. Next follows as a brief presentation of ignorance. Ignorance. Ignorance is a mental factor and mental consciousness. In general, ignorance can be defined on many levels, and thus there are various types of ignorance. One type of ignorance is awareness that it is a mere not knowing, a lack of understanding. Example is this is an ignorance that does not understand how the engine of a car works, or their ignorance does not know the alphabet. It is confused and bewildered regarding these objects. However, it is one of the most superficial or coarsest forms of ignorance. Another example is the mental factor that is confused and bewildered regarding the working of the law of cause and effect, the three jewels, and so forth. A second type of ignorance is the awareness that it is not merely confused about reality, but actually mis misapprehends it which includes the above-mentioned ignorance that apprehends an inherent existence. In fact, it is a misconception that is diametrically opposed to what actually exists. There are also various types of this kind of ignorance. Furthermore, there are numerous layers of ignorance, terms of coarseness and subtlety. Some of the subtlest types of ignorance are so subtle that we may not even be aware of them. However, in general, ignorance that is a misperception or misconception is said to be of two types. Superimposing misconception, deprecating misconception. Superimposing misconception. Example of a superimposing misconception is the ignorance that misapprehends reality on the deepest level. That is the ignorance that apprehends phenomena to exist inherently and from their own side. Another example is the coarser level of ignorance that apprehends that which is impermanent to be permanent, or the ignorance that apprehends that which is in the nature of suffering to be in nature of happiness. They are superimposing misconceptions because they have apprehended the existence of something that does not exist. 
Deprecating misconception. An example of a deprecating misconception is the ignorance that apprehends the non-existence of the law of karma, or the ignorance that apprehends the non-existence of past and future lives. They are deprecating misconceptions because they apprehend the non-existence of something that actually exists. Another way to categorize ignorance is to categorize it into one, innate or instinctive ignorance, two, intellectually or, or ideologically acquired ignorance. One, innate ignorance. Innate ignorance is a misperception that arises naturally for all sentient beings. It is inborn and not conditioned by the culture and environment we live in. Regarding, for instance, the innate ignorance apprehending the non-existence of the law of karma, we may develop firm conviction to the work in a karma and live in a community that holds that same conviction. However, when we encounter problems and difficulties, we instinctively blame other people or the environment for our problems. We spontaneously ascribe to him the main responsibility for our trouble. Similarly, even though we know rationally that our mind and body change moment by moment, we often have the sense that we ourselves and others do not change and always remain the same. Also, though, we understand that one day we are going to die. We plan and live our lives as we are immortal. Furthermore, if we have realized the lack of inherent existence I and mine, until we overcome the innate ignorance apprehending inherent existence, there will always be the spontaneous and instinctive sense of an inherent existence self, etc., which in turn will induce attachment, aversion, and other afflictions. 2. Intellectually Acquired Ignorance Intellectually, or, or, or ideologically acquired ignorance, though rooted in an innate ignorance is a misperception that is not innate but comes about due to the influence of a philosophical, religious, scientific, or cultural views and beliefs. For example, at the time of the Buddha, there are a number of philosophical systems that postulated a permanent, partless, independent self. Likewise, many religions accepted the existence of a soul, a permanent entity that exists independent of mind and today. And then there's the extremely influential Austrian psychoanalysis Sigmund Freud's description of the ego and the superego, as well as culture ideas that encourage us to be someone in the world, to be true to ourselves and to find ourselves. All these are the results of the intellectually acquired view of an inherently and objectively existent self. Another intellectual acquired view is the acquired ignorance that apprehends the non-existence of past and future lives. This misconception comes about due to the currently widely accepted scientific view that our mind is merely the product of chemical reactions within our brain and body, which ceases to exist at the time of death when these chemical reactions come to an end. From a Buddhist perspective, also religious beliefs in the omnipotent creator God, for example, are explained to arise from acquired ignorance that apprehends the non-existence of the law of karma. Ignorance, that is the root of cyclic existence. Ignorance, that is the root of all other afflictions, and thus the root of cyclic existence, is the ignorance that apprehends inherent existence. Ignorance that apprehends inherent existence is the root of all other afflictions because it induces all the other afflictions. It induces the other type of ignorance, such as the ignorance that apprehends the non-existence of the law of cause and effect, the ignorance that apprehends the existence of a permanent, partless, independent self, etc. 
as well as anger, attachments, arrogance, jealousy, and so forth. This root ignorance is also of two types. Ignorance that apprehends the inherent existence of the I and mine. Two, ignorance that apprehends the existence, inherent existence of phenomena, phenomena other than I and mine. Since both types of ignorance apprehend inherent existence, they are both the root of cyclic existence. In brief, the ignorance that misperceives the nature of phenomena on the deepest level, that is, the ignorance that apprehends inherent existence is the root cause of the six primary afflictions and the twenty secondary afflictions. Ignorance. The definition of ignorance is the following. Lack of knowledge or information. Socrates said, Know thyself many moons ago. What has humanity done since then to discover the jewel inside? Mother Nature sent us to our rooms to think things over. Yet we bitch and mow and get bored along the way. Many people refuse to wear masks, even if they kill their grandmothers. They say it is my right not to wear one. Maybe you might like a ventilator instead. If you are bored, you are missing out in life. Boredom is a state of mind. Being bored, you're stuck inside of your box. You can't think properly. You think you are wise. If I say you are the universe, you just don't know it. One who is bored will roll their eyes. The wise man will simply smile. Scientists know the existence of the quantum field. It is beyond time and space. You are a part of that field. You came from it. You will return to it. You have an opportunity to experience it while you are alive. You are magnificent. You are glorious. Your true nature is kindness. You are meant to see the unity of all life. You are hardwired to see God. The software has always been there, yet you live a petty life. The mirror of life is full of dust inside of you. Only you can clean it. Nobody can do it for you. God is your coach. As your coach, he can't play the game for you. You have free will. Nobody is trying to convince you. <coughs> the truth needs no convincing. All your book knowledge and degrees don't mean a thing if you haven't discovered the jewel inside. This is a video game of life. Let's go beyond the level where we throw garbage in our living rooms. During the shutdown, Mother Earth is cleaning up our mess, yet we are so determined to go out and act as nothing has changed. Are we spoiled brats? Mother Nature has given us a lesson to learn, yet we are blowing her off. <coughs> Remember, we need Mother Earth. She doesn't need us. Ignorance will bring man to a state of drought, yet he thinks, I'm saved. 
A wise man once said the following many moons ago when I was young. Man is sawing off the branch he is sitting on. We have the opportunity to change, yet we fight over a simple thing as to wear a mask or not. We live in a state of me, me, and me. No wonder chaos is on the earth. There are around 7 billion people on earth, and we have this attitude. We are going from me to we. It will take time. Hopefully, <laughs> we will be mature enough to grow and learn. We are stuck in our ignorance. The ten afflictions are 1. Attachment 2. Anger 3. Arrogance 5. Non-views 4. Ignorance 5. Afflicted doubt 6. View of the transitory collection 7. View holding on to extremes 8. Belief in, in, in the supremacy of wrong views, five views. Nine, belief in the supremacy of mistaken ethics and religious conduct. Ten, wrong view. The ten afflictions are one, attachment, two, anger, three, arrogance, five, non views, four, Ignorance, 5. Afflicted doubt, 6. View of the transitory collection, 7. View holding on to extremes, 8. Belief in, in, in the supremacy of wrong views, 5 views, 9. Belief in the supremacy of mistaken ethics and religious conduct, 10. Wrong view.